Yo, what's good guys? It's your boy Dom. Welcome to Dose of Dom Reacts. Today, we have another alien video. I told y'all, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we are uploading videos every single day because I want that 1,000 subscribers. I want it, I want it, I want it, but it can't happen without you guys. Today, we have the Fermi Paradox Part 2. Solutions and ideas. Where are all the aliens? Now, don't forget, this was requested by one of you lovely people in the comments. If you would like your video reacted to or a video that you like reacted to, put the link down below and I will get to it. That is my word. Nothing over 30 minutes. I used to do 12 minutes, but now 30 minutes. We on the grind. We're doing it all. I'm doing it for y'all. Y'all's love and support has been just freaking amazing. And I just can't, I, I can't ask for more. I really can't. Like, you guys are awesome. The comment section is so awesome, so informative. And I love that about you guys. We're going to get right to the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You already know we like the video. You already know that. Original link down in the description down below. Let me put these headphones on. Let's get to the show. There are probably 10,000 stars for every grain of sand on Earth in the observable universe. Dang. We know that there might be trillions of planets. Wait, 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 wait. You can't just hit me with the what? Go back. Go back. No, you can't just hit me with that in the beginning of the video. Like what? There are probably 10,000 stars for every grain of sand on Earth in the observable universe. What we know hell? that there might be trillions of planets, so where are all the aliens? This is the Fermi Paradox. If you want to know more about it, watch part one. Yes, sir. Here, we look at possible solutions to the Fermi Paradox. So, will we be destroyed, or does a glorious future await us? Glorious! Before we get into this video let me know what you guys think do you guys think that we could survive something of this magnitude or what do you think we're doomed let me know your comment let me know your opinions down below let's have a conversation love having conversations with y'all space travel is hard although possible it's an enormous challenge to travel to other stars massive amounts of material have to be put into orbit and assembled a journey of maybe thousands of years needs to be survived by a population big enough to start from scratch. And the planet might not be as hospitable as it seemed from afar. It was already extremely hard to set up a spaceship that could survive the trip. An Facts. interstellar invasion might be impossible to pull off. Oh, also, imagine. consider time. The universe is very old. On Earth, there's been life for at least 3.6 billion years. Wow. Intelligent human life for about 250,000 years, but only for about a century have we had the technology to communicate over great distances. Wow. There might have been grand alien empires that stretched across thousands of systems and existed for millions of years, and we might just have missed them. There might be grandiose ruins rotting away on distant worlds, 99% of all species on Earth have died out. It's easy Dang. to argue that this will be our fate sooner or later. Intelligent life may develop, spread over a few systems, and die off over and over again. But galactic civilizations might never meet, so maybe it's a unifying experience for life in the universe to look at the stars and... I know y'all see the Pokemon. If you see the Pokemon, let me know. Wonder, where is everyone? But there is no reason to assume aliens are like us, or that our logic applies to them. It might just be that our means of communication are extremely primitive and outdated. Imagine sitting in a house with a Morse code transmitter. Yeah, you'd keep facts. sending messages, but nobody would answer, and you'd feel pretty lonely. Maybe we're still undetectable for intelligent species, and will remain so until we learn to communicate properly. Mm. And even if we met aliens, we might be too different to be able to communicate with them in a meaningful way. Imagine the smartest squirrel you can. No matter how hard you try, you won't be able to explain our society to it. Yeah. After all, from the squirrel's perspective, a tree is all that a sophisticated intelligence like itself needs to survive. So, humans cutting down whole forests is madness. 
But we don't destroy forests because we hate squirrels. We just want the resources. The squirrel's wishes and the squirrel's survival are of no concern to us. Mm, poor squirrel. Why you must have to be so mean? A type 3 civilization in need of resources may treat us in a similar way. They might just evaporate our oceans to make collecting whatever they need easier. Wow. One of the aliens might think for a second, Oh, tiny little apes. They build really cute concrete structures. Oh well, now they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Oh, tiny little apes. How cute. Look at all this cute stuff they made. Like, <laughs> damn before activating warp speed. But if there is a civilization out there that wants to eliminate other species, it's far more likely that it will be motivated by culture rather than by economics. Facts. And anyway, it will be more effective to automate the process by constructing the perfect weapon, a self-replicating space probe made from nanomachines. They operate on a molecular level incredibly fast and deadly with the power to attack and dismantle anything in an instant. Wow. You only need to give them four instructions. One, find a planet with life. Two, disassemble everything on this planet into its component parts. Three, use the resources to build new space probes. Four, repeat. A repeat. doomsday machine like this could render a galaxy sterile in a few million years. But why would why? you fly light years to gather resources or commit genocide? The speed of light is actually not very fast. If someone could travel at the speed of light, it would still take 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way Jeez. once, and you'll probably travel way slower. There might be way more enjoyable things than destroying civilizations and building empires. An interesting concept is the Matryoshka brain, a megastructure surrounding... Matryoshka brain. Okay. ...funding a star. A computer of such computing power that an entire species could upload their consciousness and exist in a simulated universe. Wow. Potentially, one could experience an eternity of pure ecstasies without ever being bored or sad. A perfect life. If built around a red dwarf, this computer could be powered for up to 10 trillion years. Ooh. Who would want to conquer the galaxy or make contact with other life forms if this were an option? All that these true. solutions to the Fermi Paradox have one problem. We don't know where the borders of technology are. I mean, to be fair, it's just like a really sophisticated version of VR that you can actually go into. Just think about that. Just think about that, man. Think about all the people with VR headsets that don't leave their home. That's fa what they just said is facts. Why would we? Why would they need to come here if they could just simulate everything that's here? We could be close to the limit, or nowhere near it, and super technology awaits us, granting us immortality, transporting us to other galaxies, elevating us to the level of gods. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> One thing we do have to acknowledge is that we really don't know anything. Humans have spent more than 90% of their existence as hunter-gatherers. 500 years ago, we thought we were the center of the universe. 200 years ago, we stopped using human labor as the main source of energy. 30 years ago, we had apocalyptic weapons pointed at each other because of political disagreements. In the galactic timescale, we are embryos. We've come far, but still have a long way to go. The mindset that we really are the center of the universe is still strong in humans, so it's easy to make arrogant assumptions about life in the universe. But in the end, there's only one way to find out, right? Go out there and do it, man. Okay, I'm before we end this, I'm gonna bring this there's shit up. Only I want to know, and I think this is a dumb question, but my teacher always told me there was no dumb questions. Is it possible that instead of using fuel for that long of a trip, could we use solar? Like solar panels all up? But then there's no sun and space. I don't know what type of fuel we would use. I'm gonna look up a video. I'm, I'm gonna see if there's a video about what type of spaceship we need to go that far. And like what type of fuel, like what do we need to make to get us that far. You know what I mean? One way to find out, right? That's a cool ship though. Hey everybody, we finally have our own subreddit. Come by for I surveys, love discussions about future videos, FAQs, and stuff like that. Yo, let me know if y'all want me to do like some Reddit reaction videos 
Well, I'm just scrolling through Reddit talking, talking about stuff that I see on there. Since you made it this far, I want to tell you thank you. Also, it is 4.23 a.m. at the time of recording this. I want to know what time is it for you as you're watching this video. Drop that time down below. Make everyone confused. Be like, why are they dropping times? Should have stayed to the end of the video. I freaking love you guys for watching. Continue to hit that subscribe button. Continue to hit that like button. You can hit the bell if you want to. I'm not going to force you to do that. I just want two steps. That's it. Like I said, videos every single day this week. We're getting it. See you guys tomorrow in the next video about aliens. Yeah, we're still on the aliens. See you guys in the next video. I freaking love you guys. Deuces.